Hey guys, we're at the U.S. Capitol and there's been an interesting development. One less fence. The giant 12-foot unscalable barbed wire, razor wire fence has been removed. And now we just have an 8-foot barbed wire, razor wire fence on the other side of the street. But I was able to drive on 3rd Street now for the first time in two months. This is a nice commuter artery for the city and now now it's reopened so that's positive they got the crews are still removing the uh, jersey barriers over here but the fence is down i was here yesterday the fence was still up they must have worked through the night ah, that's good news hmm. Still have red lights, not like I can cross the street though. There are literally more porta potties than there are National Guard guys. <laughs> I'm not kidding. There's like there's like porta potty. There's like 40 porta potties over there, and there's like four national, no, eight National Guard guys. <laughs> now the interesting thing is that while this fence is down, the other fence is up, up now, there's a third fence way around the actual Capitol grounds that doesn't have barbed wire, but it's, it's up as well. So there's a third fence in there. So I bet when they take this one down, there'll still be a bit of time before they take the next one down. Now, that third fence that's way over on the ridge, that's the main Capitol building itself. Whenever there's a State of the Union address or a joint session of Congress, they usually do put up a fence there. Not that big, but that area is usually closed for State of the Union addresses. So I think, I think that fence is going to remain until at least they have the joint session, even if they might remove this outer fence and let us back onto the reflecting pool area. There is a sidewalk over here. Just can't get to it. <laughs> okay, the inaugural's over. So this is this is the more standard eight foot fence. And as you can see, the barbed wire is on the outside. You guys always ask me that question. Is it on the inside or the outside? Well, here you can pretty clearly see it's on the outside. We've got like spotlights up here. <laughs> I'm gonna swing over this thing. we come to Avengers Tree. This is where Captain America met Falcon for the first time. You see, I'll just show you right here. Oh. So it was on this tree, Falcon was just kind of kicking back. Captain America was running loops on the left, on the left. And this is where the Avengers were formed, this street. Black Widow, she arrived over on the street. She like pulled up over there, honked the horn, Steve Rogers got in. And history was made, this filming location for Captain America Winter Soldier. So about the only part of the Smithsonian's that are open are the outdoor gardens of some of the museums. I believe this is the Asian Art Museum, and the African Art Museum is nearby, the Sackler Gallery, and of course the Smithsonian Castle. But going inside any of these places is not allowed at this time. 
So let's just walk around the gardens a little bit, and then we're going to make our way up to a museum that is open. Now, I don't actually have a ticket to go in the museum, but I can go in the gift shop. Please exit through the gift shop. <laughs> let's go this way. Exit Through the Gift Shop is an indie movie about a street artist known as Invader. And Invader is probably my kid's favorite street artist because he puts little tile, ceramic tile, space invaders all over the world. And my kids have tracked invaders in our travels around the world. They've taken pictures of them in Paris, Hong Kong, Tokyo, I think even New York. So they're always on the lookout for invaders. And there's a game called Flash Invader you can download to your phone. And as you travel around the world, if you see a space invader sitting on the side of a building, take a picture of it, get points, play against your friends. Now I know Chantel TV in Paris and Claire Waddington, another streamer in Paris. They know where all the invaders are over in Paris and in France. We've actually found some in Amsterdam while we were on a trip there, but while, while we were chasing an invader in Amsterdam, we accidentally took a wrong turn. And suddenly we weren't looking at space invaders, we were looking at the red light district. <laughs> so here's a dad with his two kids, I don't know, they were under like 10 years old, and I'm walking down through the red light district in Amsterdam, like ostensibly looking for space invaders. My younger son keeps asking me, Daddy, why are they wearing a bikini in the window? <laughs> Whoops. Yeah, their mother was not amused. <laughs> a few days ago, you saw me watching trains over in Virginia, and these are the tracks that connect into Virginia. These lines here actually go all the way up to New York, Boston, and all the way down to Miami. So they're freight lines, but passenger trains use them as well. In fact, I think I just heard a train. Maybe it was a truck. There are commuter rails that run on this, Virginia Railway Express and Amtrak. Just not today. And for those who want to know, yes, they do go through a tunnel under the U.S. Capitol that connects over between the Supreme Court and the Capitol Building and Services Union Station. How are you doing? I just wanted to go in the gift shop. Okay, thank you. Let's go to the gift shop. Oh, wow, we'll have to go over there afterwards. Okay, so we're in the Spy Museum and I'm at home. You see they were playing Whitney Houston on this loop as I was looking at all this cool stuff and I have to re-record the audio. So all this stuff is like about the Masons and the influence of the Masons in Washington, D.C., like on the dollar bill and the design. This was a book about the history of indigo, which looked kind of interesting. I might have to pick that up. They had all these cool postcards, a lot of stuff with like Mata Hari. They had like postcards that were actually codes, uh, the CIA wants you postcard. I bought a few of these. Maybe I'll send them out to you. Behind the Enigma, I'm actually reading this book. That's the history of GCHQ, the British spy service. And then they had all sorts of other books. They had both fiction and nonfiction spy novels, or uh, spy books. These were all these posters you get, these old Cold War posters. These were just fiction books. These were mostly about spies. Some of them were, were real, but these were like written by spies, former intelligence officers, just general spy novels. But then over on this whole wall was just all pure intelligence books. Stuff on cybersecurity, stuff on physical espionage, stuff on human intelligence. This guy's, if the CIA had a bookstore, they would have this bookstore. The stuff here was just amazing. You can get some really cool books, including this one right here. This is Spy Sites of Washington, D.C. This is a tour guide for spies in Washington. Then on the other side, they had all this kid stuff, and then I saw this, and I said, oh my God, freeze-dried ice cream, astronaut ice cream, my kid definitely needs some astronaut ice cream. So they had vanilla, they had Neapolitan, they had cookies and cream, and I think I ended up getting the Neapolitan for my kid. Yeah, I got the Neapolitan. Uh, then they had a bunch of toys for little kids. It was kind of cool little ninja dude. They even had like incognito rubber ducks in case you wanted a spy rubber duck. Uh, I didn't quite get the point of that. 
Uh, they had spy garden gnomes because, you know, your garden is filled with espionage. And they had a lot of t-shirts. They had these cool Russian military hats. I actually have a real Russian military hat I got once when I was in Moscow. It's pretty, pretty warm, actually. Then they had these cans of spam where you can hide stuff. Then uh, this little book was like f fake news. They had some games, too. But then outside, Bond. James Bond. Which, as planned, exploded 30 minutes later. The turtle. Oh, yeah, this is the submarine. The first sub. Yeah. Through the exit through the store? Okay, thank you. Yep. All right. Okay, they were playing. They are losing their jobs for stating that sex is real. The Maya that Ms. Rowling refers to is, of course, Maya Forstater, who I had the pleasure to meet when she came to D.C. several years ago. Maya was forced out of her job for stating that sex is real. Order that seeks to erase women in federal administrative law. 